channel. This one is all about the Boss IR2, a wonderful pedal that has a lot of different uses that have been covered by a lot of different YouTubers. But I wanted to go through something that is personal for me and hopefully it relates to something that you're doing. The initial thing that I saw from the Boss IR2 over other um, all-in-one kind of amplifier things such as the Tonex which I also have and other all-in-one solutions that you can get on the floor is that it's also an audio interface. And for that, for me to be able to carry around an audio interface that is the size of my fist, it's fantastic. But it has all those amplifiers inside. Are those the ones that are going to be useful to me? Are they the ones that are comparable to what I usually use? Now, while I'm here in the studio, I've got lots of valve amplifiers that I usually plug into and I use all the time. But when you've ever seen me do some comparisons in the house and you might've seen the green wall with the white and guitars in the background that's inside the house when I have to play in there and I'm not allowed out here because it's well too cold or I've got to look after the kids whatever it might be I need a solution for when I'm in there and something that is DI in and that's what I'll typically use I'll turn to since well December so we're talking almost four months the Boss IR2 plug straight in now something else you should know is that whenever I've done that kind of recording and it is 90% of the kind of recording I've done since I've started recording using computers. And I started that back in 99. So you're talking 25 years of plugged into a computer. I even had a PC spec'd out while I was studying at university that had an audio card line in. Now from then, I've been recording with headphones in my ears, plugged straight into a computer. Back then, amplifiers and plugins didn't even exist. It was only about three, four years later when things like the Boss, uh, sorry, the Line 6 pod, they came out that had things built in that you could use as amplifier models. And then things have carried on, so forth. Still about, well, just before December and getting the Boss, I always used um, IK Multimedia's Amplitube, or I've been using Neural DSP, and all of their amplifier plugins that you can get. And I think they're wonderful. So I wanted to get the Boss IR2 because I have a lot of friends that work there. Um, and I really like Boss's stuff because the rest of my pedal board is, I'll hopefully put a picture up of it, is uh, the Tone Bender, the Angry Driver, the RE202, the Noise Suppressor that's just come out. These are brilliant pedals. Pull those together with an IR2 and you're, you're made, you're sorted. But I wanted to make a little video comparing what I've been used to from using Amplitude or using Neural DSP compared to tones of the IR2. Now I'm only going to go through three because there's, there are loads and of course you can find uses, but I'm going to use clean, crunch, high gain. These are the ones that I typically use more often than not whenever I'm around or trying to do any kind of quick video inside, whether it be a shootout or a quick video lesson. That's what I need to be able to make. It's not a... Ah, it's a wonderful way to work and I wanted to know which way is best. Now there's no right or wrong. It's subjective it's a choice it's whether or not when recording and put out into the world of youtube so that people that i teach and all of you guys that subscribe you're loving it is it working you be the judge so i'm going to attach on something i recorded while in the house either using plugins or the ir2 let you hear the difference vote beneath i look forward to the comments I'm going to make another video with a few friends where we actually use it out in the wild. But for beginning with the IR2, let's see how we do. Thanks so much. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Click buttons, likes, all that jazz. See you soon. <laughs>